All right, so yet again, Spark OS based on Android 12 for the Redmi K20 Pro. I think there's been one or two videos that we've already made about this particular ROM, but there are a certain ROMs which are making huge changes every time they come up with an update because these are still like the, you know, early days for Android 12. It's been three to four months that it is out and the customization options are being added. The ROMs are getting smoother. The performance is getting better. And that is the reason it is important that we try to cover each and every update of these important ROMs. So we are talking about about Android 12 based Spark OS's latest update which I flashed yesterday and I've been using it since then so this is probably a decent review that you'll get out of it and you'll get a good idea if you should flash it or not but before we get into the details if you haven't already please consider subscribing because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this if you like chatting with like-minded people well please join us on telegram we have more than 1500 people over there with similar devices you can also follow us on Twitter Facebook and Instagram and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort well please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kalash let's get going so let's see what we have here we have spark os s tempest that is what they are calling this particular update previous one was storm i believe official android 12 updated on christmas that is 25th of December. Now you do have a device change log over here, but it takes you to GitHub. So I didn't go there. So the source change log, if you have a look, they have made quite a lot of changing. Now, of course, I'm not going to cover each and everything. I'm not going to read through this part. You can pause the video and read it, but there are a lot of changes. And what they do say is Android 11 firmware recommended. Now there is an option to read over here. There are no issues with battery usage and Android 11 firmware. There are two major custom vendor OSS trees. So this is, okay, you can read, read this later. Always make a NAND backup. Be safe, clean flash before reporting bugs based on OSS vendor in Soviet kernel donations and stuff. So if you wish, you can go ahead and support them. Now, because this is based on Soviet kernel, it really, really brings a lot of interest from me because Soviet kernel, even on Siberia OS for the K20 Pro and on other ROMs as well has been performing really, really great. So that is the reason it's important to go ahead and check out how the latest update of Park OS is performing, right? Now, the moment you boot into this ROM, you will see that you have a very, very basic wallpaper, which looks great. You have this calendar widget at the top. And if you swipe from the top to bottom, you have these quick tiles. Now, this section over here, you do see changes over here. Now, what I would like is for it to be clickable, right? These are good things they have you know, made the layout look a little different, which is always a good thing because you stand apart. You do see that you have the traffic indicator here, your silent indicator, your Wi-Fi icon, your battery estimate, you have the date, day and time. All these things are present. You do have these quick tiles available, including screenshot and all the other options. So if you go ahead and edit the quick tiles, you will see that because this ROM is focused towards customization. You do have quite a lot of options, including your privacy centric tiles for mic, camera and location, right? You do have the option of extra dim, you have caffeine, you have ambient display, you have sound, FPS info, audio mode, CPU info, heads up. And then let's see here. So all these features are present and they can be added as well. So let's go ahead and enable FPS info. This particular animation is something that I've customized. So that's good. Ambient display can be turned on and off. Caffeine can be turned on and off. Extra dim on off. These are good things over here. What I don't see is the built-in screen recorder. A couple of ROMs now. Uh, Pixel experience on Android uh, 12, the official one for the Poco X3 Pro has, you know, it was not there screen recording for some reason. And even in this particular update, I don't see screen recorder. The screen recorder that you see at the bottom over here, let's see which, which one, oh, you have DC dimming screen recorder, screen capture, okay. Let's see, I hope it is not, so give me a minute over here. The screen recorder that we have is a third party one that is installed. So let's go ahead and uninstall it. Let's see now, DC dimming, let's go ahead and enable that. Now let's see if we have something called a screen recorder or screen capture. I just want to be sure that I don't give out wrong information to you guys. 
FPS info, ambient display, auto rotate, sync, aeroplane mode, screenshot. Yeah, so for some reason, the built-in screen recorder is not present. Maybe they will add it in a later update, but that's fine. These quick tiles and this UI at the top looks great. You do have the advanced power menu over here as well. That works okay. There is a shortcut for settings, which is very, very smooth and cohesive. The app icon animations on this particular ROM are just there like they are still a little jittery just like pixel extended they could be better and smooth like if you talk about siberia always the app icon animations are pretty good i'm not saying this is bad but yeah with time they will do a better job now to the left of course you have google feed which is present and that works absolutely smooth nothing to worry there no stutters no jitters even when updating as you can see it works absolutely fine if you press and hold on the home screen you have home settings which has launcher 12. now this launcher guys if you're watching the spark os review for the first time it does give you access to a lot of customization which is a good thing you have home screen rotation notification dots icon pack themed icons icon shape font is experimental theme accent color auto adaptive icons so if you go to theme you have light and dark for okay auto adaptive icons as you can see let's see here so I don't know if auto adaptive icons is doing something. You do have a ton of home screen customization here. Then you have dock customization, which is a good thing. You have your app drawer customization. Just see the amount of options you have over here. You have your folders available. Then you have your recent customization. You can go ahead and add these options as well. So yeah, launcher, launcher on ASP ROMs. If you're going to make a custom ROM, you know, why not go ahead and include it? Because it is going to give you a lot of options. Now, apart from Google feed, you have your wallpapers over here. So let's go to wallpaper and style, change wallpaper. Okay, let's see here. Let's go to something vibrant this time. Not my taste, but why not give it a try, right? So let's say we go to home settings over here and you go to home settings, icon size, show labels, feed. Okay. For all non-adaptive icons, it does have background lightness. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, these icons. Okay. So you don't really have the option of themed icons over here. And uh, that is sort of missing they will include it but monet ui is doing a great job that's working fine if you go to the multitasking menu over here you will see that you have let me show you split screen and free form so free form is basically your floating window which is always a good thing so yes the multitasking is working fine it works absolutely smooth no problem whatsoever you have your standard options that are available like split screen and all the other things they are working fine. At the bottom, you now have a lens shortcut, which is a good thing. It works fine. Very, very unique place to include that option. You also have screenshot, which I don't know why there is no scrolling screenshot. Okay. Well, these are good things, but you know, the way they have customized it and you have the clear on option as well, right? Now let's go to settings over here and let's say go to about phone, go to Android version 12. You do have your Android 12 Easter egg over here, which gives some really vibrant colors and it looks very, very nice. So SparkOS version is Tempest official December security patch. That is the name of the maintainer. And as you can see, the kernel is the Soviet star kernel, the latest one, which is a good thing. Now let's further go ahead and see the other options. Now, when you're talking about a custom ROM like SparkOS, you will talk about the other customizations basic things like say if you go to battery you have you know all the basic stuff available you don't really have thermal profiles right and if you go to display you have wake on plug to prevent accidental wake up then you will have dc dimming which is present in quick tiles as well lock screen customization gives you access to always on while charging always on time and info privacy customization so these are basic things which are which are a part of android 11 and 12 they work fine but if you go to fireworks over here this is a dedicated separate menu for the customization of spark OS. now that is a good thing because this this is what makes this particular rom different apart from its performance and battery life if you go to themes over here you have extra themes you can customize that as you can see uh we might have themed icons over here wait let's see here 
okay there is a clock available okay so you do have a different clock over here just pay attention over here see this this looks great extra theme okay you can change the icon pack as well monitor engine brightness okay so you can override the monitor engine using this particular menu under lock screen well you have the display schedule for always on display and a few other customization options which are there and they're working absolutely okay if you go to status bar you have a bunch of customization options available over here now understand that these options are increasing day by day you might see one or two options being added in every particular update so it doesn't really make sense to cover each and every option I might though make a dedicated video for each ROM and what a customization does. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to make dedicated videos on say Spark OS's fireworks menu, what each option does, we can go ahead and cover that as well. Now, if you go to fireworks and you go to say gestures, well, let's see here. You should have three finger screenshot. They've not included that. That's really weird. You have a dedicated gestures menu and you don't have three finger screenshot you should go ahead and include that but you do have scrolling screenshot of android 12 which is present and it works absolutely fine you have heads up vibrate on connect vibrate on disconnect and that's under miscellaneous and then you have the customization option for power menu disable power menu on lock screen is a good option now see that you have always on display over here right so once it didn't work but most of the time on always on display as well even when you leave the phone idle for a long time it works fine the implementation is a little different what it does is it will first light up the screen and then it will detect the fingerprint so as you can see over here we are on always on display there you go so yeah most of the time it works fine in daily usage you will not really have any major problems so that's everything about the customization of this particular rom now the important aspect is battery life and charging charging speeds are pretty decent one hour five minutes one hour ten minutes and bam your phone is charged and it is also a factor that at this point these devices are two years old so your battery capacities would have reduced but if you talk about the battery usage as you can see over here we've had about quite a lot of usage over here So idle for 16, almost 17 hours and 44 minutes of screen on time and benchmarks being run. We are still at 71% battery. So the battery life is actually decent. It was, it's working great. Now, apart from this, if you actually go to safety net over here, you will see that the safety net passes out of the box. No problem there. Play Store certification is present. Widevine L1 is present. Now let's quickly talk about the benchmark numbers. So as you can see, the device throttled to 88% of its max performance. Average score was 177, 691 GIPS. That's really a good score. Moving on, we have Geekbench numbers over here. 738 single core, 2585 multi core. Decent numbers, nothing out of the ordinary. And in Antutu, well, let's see here. 558,971. That's a good score for N22. So Spark OS for me has been very, very smooth. It has been performing well. While making changes in the fireworks menu, once or twice the UI restarted, not the device, but the UI restarted. That might be a, you know, small bug or something that they'll figure out in the next update. But yes, you can use Spark OS as a daily driver. It does have a lot of customization. Things that are missing is game mode and some more fine tuning is needed. But yes, you can definitely use it as a daily driver. Casual gaming is okay because you saw it is Soviet star, so you should not have any problems. Let me know in the comment section, how do you think this video is? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.